Hi guys! Okay, in this episode, I'm going to show you how you can push your project directly from your local machine to your remote EC2 server using Git. Um, it's a method of deployment. Um, I've just learned how to do it, and I thought it'd be really cool to show everyone else how to do it because there are a few little tricky bits and stuff that you have to get your head around. Um, but yeah, it's okay. Alright, so here we go. I'm in my um, Amazon console. At the moment, you can see the new instance that I set up in a previous episode. Um, and first of all, what I'm going to do is uh, at the moment we've been using the public DNS to communicate with this instance using PuTTY and SSH and stuff. But for Git and this example, um, I found that you need an actual physical IP address. So we're going to assign an elastic IP address. So first we're going to go to Elastic IPs, Allocate New Address, yes, Allocate, and then we're just going to simply right click, Associate, and we're going to pick our new instance, yes, Associate. So now, that instance now has a real IP address attached to it, here we go, see that we've got 176.34.C3.792 there. So that's now our new way of communicating with this virtual machine in the cloud. So if I copy this address... <coughs> And then I go into. I'm just going to close this down. Don't need it. Okay. If I go open up Putty, I can whack in this new address. I'm going to use the usual key pair that we used to set up in the previous episode. Log in. Forget that thingy warning. Okay. Log in as Ubuntu. <coughs> Here we go. Okay, cool. So now I'm in here, I'm in the home folder, nothing in there at the moment. But what I want to do is I need to set up a repo on this machine that I can push to from my other machine. Similar to GitHub, like normally you'd make changes, commit them and push to GitHub. Um, but we want to have another repository that is on this machine that we can push to. And it's really simple to do. We're just going to create a new directory called repo. That can be called whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it repo. Uh, we're going to cd into repo, change directory. Uh, and then inside here, we're going to go git init, which you're probably familiar with. But we're going to add this bear flag on the end. So now we've init um, a repo inside this folder called repo. Um, and the, the difference between a bear initial init and a regular init is a bear init is completely separate from your project. It's not within your project directory like normally you have that dot git hidden folder inside your directory and that contains all the information about your project, all your commits and everything. Um, with a bear um, init, it's completely separate. So in this re this repo folder, this is our whole git repository, and we're going to use this to then build a working tree which is all the files and everything that you're familiar with seeing in a separate directory. Um, I'm not sure exactly why this is the best way of doing it uh, when you're pushing to a server, but um, apparently it is, and it's worked for me, so that's how we're going to go ahead and do it. Okay, cool. So, yeah, you can see here, I've just ls, you can see all the folders that have been created, and um, that's cool. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go back to my machine, my local machine, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to create a new project that we can then push to this. So here we are in the Windows command line. Um, I'm in just a folder called Sites, and I'm going to use Express to create a dummy project. Um, it's just like a boilerplate project. Um, it can be run and everything, and just kind of testing. It's good for testing Node, and I'm just going to use it to see if I can push it to this new repository that we've made on our server on EC2. Uh, so if I go express my project, there we go, you can see it's created my project here, it's just a dummy project, we've got public routes, views, all the stuff you'd normally have in a node project, but whatever, like it can be any type of project, but I'm just using this as an example. Okay, um, so I don't need this anymore, I'm going to, now I'm inside my project folder, I'm going to open up um, git bash. And I'm going to just do git init, because this is not a git project yet, but now it is. You can see we've got our little git folder here. So that's excellent. So the next thing I want to do is see if I can actually create an SSH connection from the command line. Um, 
just to prove that git can communicate with that repo. Um, so the way we can do this, there's a command in the git bash just called ssh. <coughs> and that can be used to, to, to simply ssh another server. So we'll try, we'll try at the moment to see if we can ssh into our server. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type ssh Ubuntu, because um, that's our username, and now I'm going to go at, and I'm going to grab our IP address here, our elastic IP address that we made. Bloody hell. Okay, there we go. Paste that in. And now I'm going to do, uh, this is the command we are, I'm just going to e echo out, hello world. See what happens. Uh, this is the first time we've tried to access this using SSH from this command line, so I've got to authorize it, yes. Now we get this error, permission denied. And it took me a while to work out why it said this, but um, you have to, on your Amazon cloud machine, you have to, in a file called authorized keys, add the machine you're trying to communicate from. You have to add that machine's public SSH key into that authorized keys folder so that when it tries to communicate, it can go without a password or any type of other keys, it can just go, yep, yeah, this machine's allowed. So I'll just show you now how to do that. Okay, so in your. Whoa. Okay, in. Um, on Windows, and I think it's similar with Mac and stuff, you'll find if you go to your home directory, so I'm users, I'm Wilson, there's a folder called .ssh. Inside this folder, you'll find the file called id underscore rsa, and that is the uh, public SSH key of your machine, of this local machine. Now we need to copy that key and put it into a folder called authorized keys inside our, uh, on our Amazon machine. So I'm going to copy this key to my clipboard um, and then I'm going to go back into PuTTY and I'm going to paste that key into that folder, into that file. So uh, one second. Okay, I've copied my key. Uh, I didn't want to do it on the screencast because I'm not sure if that's a uh, uh, some kind of security risk or whatever, but well, just in case. Uh, so I've got my key on my clipboard. I'm going to go back into my server here. Um, so we, yeah, we've SSH into that. We just made that git repo. We initiated a bear repo here. So I'm going to go to, um, I'm currently in my home directory. And if we do list all, you can see there's a file there called SSH. So I'm going to cd into SSH ls and then we've got that file authorized keys that I told you about okay so we need to use sudo to open this file and we're going to go vi which is vim which is the editor that comes natively with most versions of Linux and now I'm going to type in authorized keys <coughs> so I'm going to open up this file in vim I'm going to paste in the key from my clipboard and I'll see you in a second. So, one minute. Okay, so now I've now done that. You should have just gone in, um, created a new line, pasted that, pasted your local machine's SSH public key into there, and then save the file and come back out. So, now that's all good. So, we're going to go back to uh, my Git bash, my local Git bash, and we're going to try that SSH hello world thing again and see what happens. Um, but pressing up, up on the uh, keypad uh, we'll cycle through some old, uh, the latest commands you went. Cool, so I'm going to just add uh, a new remote to my git repo, my local git repo that I'll be able to push to. And this remote is going to be the server, uh, the repo that we set up on our Amazon server. Okay, so I'm going to go git remote add, I'm going to call it deploy. I'm sorry to call it deploy, you can call it whatever you want, but I think that makes sense. And I'm going to type in uh, that address that we did before with ssh slash slash ubuntu at let's grab this IP. Uh, I'll get off here. Paste that in. And then we're going to go to the directory where our repo is. So that's in home ubuntu repo. Uh, hit that. Okay, so I think that's been done. Cool. 
we'll see. Okay, so we're gonna go. I'm gonna grab this special line here. Okay, so we're gonna go to <coughs> git add all. So that's added all the files to our our um, commit, and then we're gonna commit it. Uh, so git commit. So I have a message first. Commit. Get that. Of course, that's all we can commit. So then we're gonna git push. And we're going to push to our deploy branch, which we just made. And then I'm just going to paste this little line here: uh, plus master colon refs head master. Uh, from a from a um, tutorial I read, I said that you had to run this the first time. So I'm going to do that. Now that looks like it pushed, didn't it? No errors. Looks kind of cool. Um, now if we do git branch all and see we now have two branches we've got the main master which is the one running on this machine and we've got the remote uh, deploy master so that's the one that's the one we just pushed to so this is wicked right so now although the files don't exist in physical form they are now inside this uh, they're inside our repo folder <coughs> so there we go. Um, these are our. This is our Git repo, and they're actually inside that folder. So the next step is to then create um, what's called a hook, a Git hook, um, and you can see that folder there. So if I cd into hooks, ls, you can see these are these are all um, shell scripts um, that can be run on cer at certain points. So um, for example, when we when a when a repo receives a push. Um, you can create a shell script in this file called the post post receive, and that shell script will then get yeah, automatically run every time it's pushed. So what we want to do in that shell script is to grab grab the 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 current working tree from that Git repository and overwrite it or um, uh, like check it out to um, an, a directory that has all the actual files in. Uh, you'll you'll see what I mean, and also with uh, in you can do a lot more in this. That's the, what we're going to be doing first. But you can do stuff like in Node, you can you can stop the server, restart the server. Uh, you could do whatever you want in there because it's just a shell script. Uh, this this is really useful, right, for deployment. So what we need to do is uh, we need to create a folder or a directory where where our actual site files are going to be. Um, checked out or actually materialized from this git repository right so if we cd back to our we're back in our home directory now I'll see you to my home directory we're going to create another folder mkd and I'm going to put www and that's the folder that's going to contain our files so I'm going to go back to the uh, repo folder um, CD Ubuntu. Okay. So I'm going to CD into my repo folder. CD into my. And we want to be in hooks, right? Okay. So these are all sample files of um, Git hooks, but we want to create a real one that doesn't have that sample extension that's actually going to get run. Um, and that's going to be called Post Receive. Post Receive is the one that is triggered when. Uh, when uh, when the repo is pushed to. Uh, now this is a nice little script. Okay, so here we go. <coughs> Cat is just making a new file and I'm calling it post receive. Uh, in this file I've got the first line, it's just saying it's going to be a shell script. Um, we're creating the git work, we're saying where the git working tree is going to be, so it's going to be in home Ubuntu www that we just made. Uh, we're going to export that variable and then we're going to check it out. I'm not entirely sure exactly, what, I know roughly what this command does, but I don't know it throughout, but it works. So that's cool. Um, but it pretty much just grabs the latest version from the git repository and puts it into the working tree. So that's cool. Um, 